Welcome to our tutorial. This video will demonstrate the use of the Sun Zenith Angle feature in Savoir. Sun Zenith Angle is a parameter used in optical observations to characterize how well an area of interest is illuminated when it is covered by a sensor. Technically, it is the angle between the nadir direction and the sun direction at the point of observation. If the area of interest is in the illuminated part of the Earth, we can expect a small sun zenith angle. But if we are observing an area close to dawn or dusk, we can expect a sun zenith angle getting closer to 90 degrees. And it would be beyond 90 degrees if we are observing on the dark side of the Earth. So for optical observations, we are interested in having small sun zenith angles well below 90 degrees, because we aren't interested in getting measurements on the dark side when there isn't sufficient illumination. Let's begin by considering an example in Savoir using the Landsat 8 satellite. So let's go to the satellites pane up here and switching down to Landsat 8, from which we can take an optical instrument sensor called the OLLI multispectral. And then we remove the intersection mode from up here so that we can see the sensor coverage for 24 hours. As you can see, there are many swaths. Some of them are going to be on the sunlit side of the Earth, while some others are going to be on the dark side. But how can we eliminate those dark side swaths. We do this using the sun zenith angle constraint. We highlight the OLLI multispectral sensor name here, move down to the properties pane below, click on the second option which is the constraints option, then move down to select the sun zenith angle, place our cursor here to be able to write 80, and then hit the enter button so that it has taken the new constraint degree, as you can see, and press refresh here. At this point, we see that Savoir has cut those swaths, which were not well illuminated, having a sun zenith angle higher than 80 degrees, and we are left with the ones that are illuminated by the sun. As you can see, on the left-hand side of the map, it is written that the date is June. And we can observe how in the northern hemisphere there's a greater concentration of swaths, and it is well illuminated, whilst in the southern hemisphere here, so around the South Pole area, it is not well covered at all. If we change the dates on the calendar to somewhere in November, so let's open up the calendar from here, and move along till we arrive at November. And let's say that we choose the 23rd and 24th and we press refresh once more, we see that we obtain the opposite effect so that the area around the North Pole has no coverage this time because there isn't enough light, whilst many swaths are available near the South Pole area, as you can see. We can observe this even better by going to the View menu up here and selecting the Ambient Light submenu. And we then simply switch the setting from high to low. At which point, Savoir reduces the amount of ambient light and the map is shown with a more realistic amount of illumination. You can see that the swaths become cut when they're about to enter the dark side of the Earth, as it is visible here. We can observe this even more closely by creating an animation. So we're going to first change the speed from the speed tab here and from, we're going to put it to 200. And then when we move to the animation button here, we can make it go even faster. So up to 800 or even 1,600 and we can clearly see how Landsat is scheduled only when the illumination is sufficient. So in this case, when the sun zenith angle is over the 80 degrees. And so as the satellite is flying, it's always covering the bright side of the Earth, whereas on the dark side, Landsat is not scheduled. 
We can go back to change the constraint of the sun zenith angle to an even lower value, let's say to 60 degrees. So back here, and let's put in 60 instead. And then we press the refresh once more. And you see how we get shorter swaths further away from the North Pole now. Or we can raise it to 90 degrees. So once again, back to the constraint. Raising it to 90, pressing the refresh once more. And now we observe how the cutoff is set higher north. The sun zenith angle is also shown on the map here at the top left. This value gives the sun zenith angle for the position of the earth where the cursor is at the indicated time. So in this case we're speaking about November 23rd. Now we're going to see how the sun zenith angle is also handled in the Gantt view by first creating an area of interest. So let's move to the Antarctic region here and let's create an area of interest from the area of interest tab here. I'm going to select a polygon to work with and I'm going to place my area let's say here and we immediately get the acquisitions for Landsat here. Switching to the Gantt display up here, we see that we have a number of acquisitions. And if I click on any of them, I obtain a pop-up and I will see the various parameters of this acquisition. I can check the swath footprint details, which is the fourth option here. And when I do so, I can see that it says that this particular swath measured at its center has a sun zenith angle of 76.52 degrees, which gives a good indication of how well the acquisition is illuminated. Another interesting thing we can see is the sun zenith angle plot. By right-clicking, when positioned over the polygon, we then can select the sun zenith angle option and we obtain a sinusoidal curve showing the 90 degrees maximum sun's zenith angle constraint that we had set, as you can see here. We are able to view how Savoir is scheduling only the swaths which are below the 90 degrees, as you can see. And it is cutting them off when the angle exceeds this value. In this way, we can be sure that the acquisitions we have planned are compliant with the required illumination needs that we had inserted. So, the 90 degrees we had given it before. So that is all regarding the use of the Sun Zenith Angle feature in Savoir. Thank you for your attention.